last 10 years, Everything Paranormal has captured the attention of many people, invaded TV, radio, the books we read, and even in the news, and the popularity seems to keep growing. No longer kept hidden and talked about in hushed voices. Now people are talking around the proverbial water cooler with incidents that happened years ago or just yesterday. Seems many are curious and anxious to tell stories about their own brush with the supernatural. My name is Jackie Meter. I'm director of Central California Paranormal Investigators, and this is my co-host, sensitive healer and Reiki master of Casa del Curandero and partner, Krista Erickson. Together we are going to be talking about things that go bump in the night and even during the day. We are going to take you to places that some say are haunted, meet those who hunt for ghosts, venture into the wilderness in search of Bigfoot, watch the skies for UFOs, discover metaphys metaphysical mysteries, and investigate urban legends. Those who are on a journey and committed to researching all manner of the paranormal. We hope you enjoy our special guests and discussions on various paranormal topics. You are watching <laughs> Paranormal Journeys. Welcome. Our discussion tonight is going to take a more than usual serious tone as we talk about religion and the paranormal. As a ghost hunter, I often get asked, how do I reconcile my religious beliefs and ghost hunting? Some say I shouldn't be messing around with demons or that I worship the devil and going straight to hell. Well, I may be going straight to hell, but I don't think it's for this reason. Mm -hmm. But And those are the nicer comments. So. The question is, can someone believe in God, follow a spiritual path, and hunt for ghosts at the same time? Can they, or more importantly, should they coexist together? Well, we're going to talk about this very controversial topic with someone who has been on this journey. He is a native Californian, born and raised in Riverdale and Clovis, graduating from Clovis High School in 1967. After a stint in the Army, he was honorably discharged in 1971 and came back to Fresno to work for the Internal Revenue Service for the next 27 years. He's retired now and has written a book called The Jesus Tree Ornaments and also has projects he's producing here at the CMAC TV studio. So where el what else does he do in his spare time? Well, he hunts ghosts, of course. So please welcome our guest, Gary Kennedy. Hi, Gary. Good to see you. Hey, Krista. Good to see you, too. <laughs> Come on in. <laughs> Jackie. Hi. How are you? Oh, give a hug. Give the hug. <laughs> have a seat. Thank you. Thank you. It's good to be here. <laughs> yeah. Good. We're glad to have you here. Yeah, so you want some answers between religion and the paranormal? Yeah. <laughs> yep, that's Absolutely. what we're looking for. Absolutely. The uh, unreconcilable. You know, yeah. it's, uh, well, no, I think there's a way. I do. I think there's a way. I know. Absolutely. I, know. I was just mm. being a little cute there. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and every, every ghost hunter has some belief system out there. You know, I mean, whether they're Christian or Buddhist mm -hmm. or Muslim. Mm -hmm. I mean, sure. Or, or atheist, but there's some sort of belief system. Right. So sure. how, but we're here to talk to you today about how you reconcile it, because you've been a longstanding member at People's Church. Correct. And uh, um, yeah, I'm pretty active out there. I've uh, led a few ministries in about the last five years. Me and a buddy named Brad mm -hmm. have done uh, men's ministry, Christ mm -hmm. Warriors out there and stuff. And uh, I've uh, also participated in couples retreats and everything else. So I've been a member out there for 34 years. However, I'm not on staff. I don't want to confuse anybody and I don't speak for the church. Okay. Right. Uh, it's a great <laughs> church. It was led by G.L. Johnson and now it's under Dale Oquest. And uh, me personally, I did not grow up in church, okay? Right. Never went right. to church until I was approximately uh, 32 years old. Oh, and okay. And the Lord All delivered right. me from alcoholism and tobacco and a, a bad lifestyle, okay? Uh, shortly after that, I uh, started uh, going to church, people's church, and uh, I had an experience, and uh, one day my grandmother wanted to take my daughter uh, my new daughter to get her pictures taken with Santa Claus and I'm not against Santa Claus I've dressed up as Santa Claus before but I wanted my daughter to grow up in a manner in which it didn't depend whether she was good or bad I loved her no matter what okay 
And the gifts yeah. that we gave to her at Christmas had to do with uh, how much we loved her, not mm -hmm. based upon merit. Right. So that kind of started my journey, my supernatural journey. <laughs> and it was some years yeah. later, it, it hit the paranormal aspect. Right. Okay? But that's in your book, too. And I, and I, so I, I'm glad to hear you say that because yeah. I hadn't heard that story before. So that's in your book, which we're going to talk about later. But mm -hmm. yeah, that's, that was fascinating. I wondered where you, where you got that idea. So, but anyway, mm -hmm. I sure. think Krista had a couple more questions real quick for you before we talk. About the mm -hmm. book. Yeah, <laughs> about the book. Um, so while you kind of started your spiritual path and as mm -hmm. you started going down it, when did you know that you kind of had the special calling? Uh, it, it started early. Uh, once again, it, it would go back to that, that date uh, when I had this uh, impression that I needed to somehow uh, glorify God in Christmas, being a new Christmas, uh, mm -hmm. Christian, okay? And so he had me do a, a children's book with ornaments that explained the true reason why we celebrate Christmas. And then I started having, years later, paranormal experiences, and I wanted to do a book about the book. And when I started this book, The Jesus Tree Ornaments, mm -hmm. that's when por paranormal experiences started happening to me, or demonic, whatever you want to call it, that yeah. I couldn't explain. And a lot of it's wrapped up in the, uh, my character's journey in the book. Uh, you know, he meets uh, divine characters as well as demonic right. and evil characters. Right. You know, so right. that's essentially the genesis of how that book got started, the Jesus Tree Ornaments. And what about your own personal path? Well, how did you get started into ghost hunting? Oh, well, <laughs> well, when I got in, uh, started having these, and it's funny, these first paranormal experiences happened to me on the street right behind us here in Fulton, one block away. Uh, one day a woman was screaming at me. Uh, I could give you more details later. Another time there was a lady walked past me. I felt an apprehension when I got near her and a great electric shock went up my arm and she turned around and said, I see the light in you. I'm going, you know, what are you talking about here? You know, it's like <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I remember meeting a, a bum on the front door of the, what is now the, the C-Max uh, building, which used to be the Met. Right. I remember giving him five bucks and sent him to uh, the rescue mission. But it was right here in this area. So it's, it's kind of funny now that, you know, here I am in this building where these things first started happening. But when these things first started happening to me, I'm going, why are these things happening to me? I'm trying to write a, a, a novel to glorify Christ, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, I want to know how does this fit in or why is this happening to me? And, and I did talk to church people and most people will say, don't go there, just stay away from it. It's kind of like, you know, right. put right. it in the closet and just keep it there to yourself. Right. And to me, that's not satisfactory. So yeah. uh, I uh, came across Jackie on the Internet <laughs> and uh, I gave her a call. <laughs> Correct? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And she was teaching her paranormal class 101. Right. And it was going to be at the uh, Sierra Sky Ranch. And uh, I said, I would like to I go. Think. It was a workshop. It was a yeah. workshop. And that night we did an investigation. Mm -hmm. Right. And because uh, I want to know is, uh, okay, these things are happening. Is there really such a thing as ghosts? Or is it just angels and demons? Right. But what if there's ghosts? And what do you mean they're stuck? And why would they be here anyway? And why haven't they passed on? You know, so, and yeah. if there's a way to show yeah. scientifically that that is the case, mm -hmm. well, I want to explore that sure. and find out more about it. Because now, you know, I was raised Lutheran, so I'm familiar with the Bible, and the Bible talks about angels and demons, like mm -hmm. you mentioned, but they don't talk about ghosts, so they don't really have an answer, Well, not in my experience. Not necessarily. I mean, uh, I mean, after all, Jesus was a ghost. That's he, true. he was resurrected, and he walked around in the flesh, did he not? Uh, in the Old Testament, uh, the prophet was called back, in, uh, supposedly through a soothsayer, and they would yeah. say, that's why you're not supposed to call him back. And mm -hmm. I am for one that is not for channeling anybody to receive instructions from them because life's supposed to be about faith. Right. And right. it's not supposed to be seeking answers from the other side, okay? So there are instances in the Bible. I mean, Moses even came down and met Jesus, you know? So yeah. I believe if God wills it, well, then ghosts can come back. People right. can come back. What if your dearly departed one came to you? And, uh, you know, they just died, and uh, they're giving you comfort. Sure. We have a gracious God. Could he not do that? Sure. I Except, mean, yes. I, And that's why you started you know. looking, I'm guessing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, so you know. what, yeah, so 
if you th you think you have a special calling and maybe uh, in a particular way or I know you once told me that you you want to help people. I mean that's sure. that's the given. Sure. But do you feel you have a special calling? I think we all do as Christians. Uh, mine is the emphasis has been drawn more as I mentioned to you after the demonic side. Correct. You know, right. uh, I th I take pleasure in doing a house cleansing. Okay. For someone, if okay. they think there's something demonic going on, but here's where I like the paranormal. We go out there and scientifically prove first. Right. Okay. Is there really something going on right. here, or is it just the air conditioner kicking on? <laughs> you know, what I mean, I don't want to waste Which time. Which happens. You know. <laughs> and well, and, and, and maybe we should mention now that if there's any shaking on your screen, oh, yeah. <laughs> it's not because Jackie upgraded us to super nice massage chairs, <laughs> it's because there's construction going on outside. And the whole building is shaking. The whole building is shaking. It feels like an earthquake, yeah. so just an FYI. <laughs> I was thinking about getting on a meter or something to check yeah. this place, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> so I was also told to ask you about pennies from heaven. Pennies from heaven. Boy, we used to <laughs> sing that up at Y Camp in Lake Sequoia when I was a kid, you know. Lord ain't got no more pennies was the, the, the last line. There's another shake. Yeah, another uh, shake. <laughs> yeah, I've had a lot of experiences with finding pennies. Mm -hmm. uh, real quickly, my first one involved uh, my coffee maker at home. And uh, my normal grinder was broken. Or no, the grinder on top of the coffee maker was broken, so I ground the beans in a regular grinder. Yeah. And I poured them in there, and we had our coffee. And later on, I went back and lifted open the lid to get rid of the, the used grinds. And uh, on top was a shiny penny. <laughs> and wow, I go to my wife and my son. I go, okay, who's playing games here? Nobody was. I'd had wow. other experiences, so I'm going, well, this is kind of weird, you know. And, and there's an answer to it. I think the Lord will give it to me later. A few weeks later, I went back to work. And my supervisor had been gone for a month because her, her boyfriend had died, okay? Mm. And he died in the driveway. Mm. And I went into her office to offer my condolences, you know, and I did. And she goes, you know what, Gary? The weirdest thing is happening to me, though. I swear, everywhere I look, I'm finding pennies. <laughs> I think he's trying to contact me. Mm -hmm. And I'm going, okay, well... This never happened to me before, but, you know, I just found a penny in my coffee maker. So now I'm talking to you. Is there a connection? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> however, <laughs> it's not the first time someone has died that uh, I have found pennies in the most unusual places or they appear out of nowhere. Uh, if you go onto the Internet and type in supernatural, paranormal, and pennies, you'll find that this happens to a lot of people. And, uh, yeah, we have, yeah. we even printed out a bunch of stories and it, pennies and dimes seem yeah. to be really common too. Um, and these stories, it seems that it's either one of two situations. When somebody pass, so passes away mm -hmm. and they're leaving coins kind of as a yes. message, like I'm still here. Um, yes. And the other one is happening when people are in really desperate need mm -hmm. for money. All of a sudden it, it shows up. One of my favorite stories that, um, that Jackie found actually was a mom. She was a, a single younger mom who had two kids and she needed $3 mm -hmm. so that her sons could buy lunch at school the next day and she couldn't even come up with $3. She mm -hmm. was just so absolutely broke and she was so like just sad about it, sure. about not being able to provide. She was gonna keep mm -hmm. her kids home from school um, yeah. so that she could be there and you know mm -hmm. figure something out for food. Sure. And her kids were like, no, we can't miss school, we can't miss. They'd never yeah. missed a day that year. Right. And they were sitting in their living room and in the kitchen they heard all these sounds, these mm -hmm. weird clinking sounds and they went into wow. the kitchen and there was exactly $3 worth of quarters wow. on, the on the kitchen floor. floor. Yeah. Yeah. And her 12 year old son had mentioned to her, he immediately said like, oh, well, that's from grandma. Grandma used to always give me quarters. Wow. Aww. So yeah. awesome. <laughs> it's, it's just too, amazing. Yeah, sure. it's like, it, apparently from the research, it says at times the appearance seems random, mm -hmm. but in other cases, it's, it has a very meaningful purpose, mm -hmm. sometimes with a clear connection to a deceased loved one. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, why? Uh, nobody knows, but yeah. it happens. Yeah, and I don't think it's just with the deceased anymore. Mine seems to have evolved. I'll find them, you know, I'll be thinking about a project or what I'm working on for the Lord, and uh, I'll make a decision. And then, uh, I, I can you, I could walk between two cars, and I could have chosen any path, and there's a penny right there laying in the middle of the road. Yeah. You know, it's like, okay, 
I know you could chalk it up to coincidence, right. whatever, you know, but well, I, so I've so never found so many pennies in my life, right. especially at a special time. And some may know? be coincidence. I mean, Absolutely. I find pennies too, but it's sure. very random. Sure. But I mean, your instances happen so often. So, yeah. so do you see it then as a sign that you're on the right path? Yeah, yeah, Good. yeah. And, you know, some people might say that's uh, an angel, a guardian angel. I don't yeah. know. Uh, mm -hmm. However, you know, my wife's found them too. And uh, sometimes when I share this with people, they have a tendency to find them, you know. Okay. You know, I think it's sometimes just being spiritually open. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, there's more than one way the Lord can communicate with us. And sure. There's more than one vessel he can use, you know. Absolutely. And so I definitely believe in angels, and uh, I believe we all have guardian angels. Yeah, I do so too. So keep your eyes out for pennies, yeah. everyone. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and you don't put your faith in the angels, and you don't ask them for advice. You just They're just there to confirm. Uh, you know, as a Christian, in faith, I always go to the Lord. You yeah. know? I mean, I take it to Him, and then, uh, you know, He has His way of delivering a special way to me. So right. it's really cool. All right, Jackie's leading us. Look at that. She's already grabbing the book. So yeah. let, let's move on. Let's, so let's, let's talk about I it. I know. Let's talk about <laughs> sure. the book. Sure. We've we both got a chance to read it. Yes. I, I'll admit I've only gotten about two-thirds of the way through, and I can't wait to see how it ends. Well, it's 427 pages. Yeah, so, yeah it is. You know, but it's so. good. It was, it, it was, I, was, I was really surprised at, good. Good. at how just involved the story was just okay go ahead oh, Jackie. I enjoyed the <laughs> journey this gentleman yeah. when it was on Thomas I enjoyed mm -hmm. his journey meeting all these the Bible characters and the questions he had and the things they were trying to tell him without telling him too much and then sure. you know I enjoyed I mean that journey it was fascinating it I, really I, was. I did I enjoyed that um, <laughs> so okay so maybe we need to back up here so you had mentioned that you talked about the Jesus tree ornaments that you created the for your daughter. The decorations, yes, that you okay, put so on the tree. So you have, this is, um, this is the original. Yes. And this is an updated version. Anime style. Like an anime yeah, style. Yeah. And you can print out both for free on the internet. Yeah. Right. At JesusTreeDecorations.com. So, so this is like the kid-friendly version. Yeah, and the parents should, you know, participate with them and uh, count down the dates to Christmas yeah. and teach them scripturally why we celebrate Christmas, you know, right? Uh, the birth of Christ. I think we have a picture, too, of the, of the actual Christmas tree. Oh, yeah. I think it's photo three with the ornaments on the tree. If we could mm -hmm. show that real quick. There, there we go. Is. Yeah. So, so what happens is the kids, they get to color these. So the parent reads mm -hmm. the story, the kids can color them, cut sure. them out. And then All scripturally based, starts in the Garden of Eden, goes through the prophets, goes through David, Abraham, mm -hmm. Moses, Elijah, uh, to the birth of Christ, to the shepherds and everything else, to the last yeah. book of Revelations. So, you know, and got Jesus is in the, the, uh, the last tree in the book of the Bible, the tree of life. Right. To him overcome it, to a leg around to eat the tree of life. Right. Yeah. And I liked all the, I mean, you had the boys, uh, Joshua, and you had John, and you had, you know, I mean, and there were and there were a lot of uh, not so nice characters. That yeah, yeah, well. that's yeah. the dark sides there. Yeah, yeah. it's all one man's journey. Thomas, as you right. mentioned, his son's yeah. dying in the hospital. Mm -hmm. Someone's put a regular Christmas tree in there, and uh, or actually, he brought a regular Christmas tree, and then somebody else exchanged it for the Jesus tree. He didn't think that was adequate right. for his son, so he wanted more of a worldly gift. So he goes to the World Mall, and that thus begins his journey where he starts meeting the Bible characters mm -hmm. that are all in those books mm -hmm. uh, up into the end. And it all happens in the span of 12 hours. And I can see a movie in this. I Absol really can. Absolutely. Hey, I can any, see Any a producers movie. out there? Anybody <laughs> here at c <laughs> Max, you know? I can really so, see a movie, yeah, uh, cool. you know, in, in, this, in this, Defin this journey. Definitely. Yeah. And so, so this... Is not for kids. <laughs> no, that's what it but, says right on the bottom. Yeah, not the, meant for little is, boys and girls. It's a lot darker than this. But yeah. like yes. you had mentioned earlier, this is kind of like the expanded version of. It's a book about a book. It's yeah. Uh, yeah I took that and just made it into a novel. Uh, and uh, the you know, that book uh, I put what I thought the Lord truly wanted and listened to Him. Uh, another venue I'm working on right now, matter of fact, with you. Uh, you know, is kind of involves pennies again in the yeah. short film we're doing. So, because uh, yeah. that that was that took a lot of years. Uh, the one I wrote with you is, only took a couple months. Right, right. It was but a lot of years. That years. is really complex. And if you want some serious thought of why, what it is, what you believe in, and whether it's true or not, well, then of course I recommend you buy it uh, for sure. And you can get the author discount at JesusTreeOrnaments.com. Uh, yeah. And what yeah. do you hope people take away? 
from reading your book? Salvation. Uh, mostly it talks, everybody has a, a purpose and a reason why they're here. Mm -hmm. Everybody has a spiritual path mm -hmm. to fulfill, you mm -hmm. know. And if you acknowledge the Lord in all, you know, all his ways and, uh, and follow him, he will direct your path. And uh, it's only riches and glory that follow. Uh, you know, it's not an overnight thing. Uh, you know, things may become fantastic for you. It's not about getting rich. It's, it's more about being content. Right. with where you're at and right. who you are and sharing the gospel. And, uh, you know, we're, that is our, our purpose. Part of our purpose for being down here is to uh, spread the good kingdom news. Uh, right. Because we're in a world of darkness and uh, yeah. it's ruled by Satan. Uh, our Lord hasn't come back yet, but we are his, uh, his army to usher in God's kingdom. And so, and it's all good news. That's what gospel means. You know, it's good news. It's, it's grace. It's mercy. It's forgiveness. It's brotherhood. It's all the positive things in life that someday will once again prevail on this planet. Well, we know, I mean, because we know you personally mm -hmm. outside of the studio here, but we know that we, and both of us know, realize that you're a very devout Christian. And uh, mm -hmm. I'm glad to have you in the paranormal family because you bring us, you bring us that connection and, uh, I mean, I tell people all the time, um, I'm not basically a very spiritual person, although I was baptized Catholic. I'm not a regular churchgoer. But sure. I tell you what, you know, I, it, this only strengthened my belief in God. So, cool. you know, cool. I mean, for me, you know, I had to actually think about it and go, yeah, you know, well, yeah, he does exist. Yeah, he does. Right. You know? God is spirit. Yeah. God so, is love. I mean, for me. But anyway, sure. uh, we've got... Yeah, well, we know that you produced a short video about your time at a haunted hotel in Oakhurst, oh, yeah. California. Mm -hmm. yeah. Everyone mm -hmm. here has heard about it because we talk about it all the time, Sierra yeah. Sky Ranch. Um, and you had a personal experience. Mm -hmm. I think we have a picture and we have a video clip. So let's take a look at this photo. So explain what, what's going on here. Well, in the, the first picture there, you see there on the left, there's nothing above my head. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, my wife, you know, in the paranormal, you always take two pictures, okay? Yes. And shortly after that, I felt struck in the lip, and that's where you see the ribbon orb. Well, I call it an energy ribbon is what I call it. Yeah. I've seen them before. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Not, yeah. Ma not many times, mm -hmm. but I've seen them. And that was in the loft back behind the Sarah Sky Ranch where supposedly uh, a gentleman lived at one time. Okay. That, uh, yep. I know, had a I bad attitude, and, and I hear he only uh, attacks men. Mm -hmm. And I was praying in the spirit at the time I went up there, and I guess he didn't like that. So <laughs> he's very cranky and grumpy. Yeah. Um, yeah. He even told one of our psychics that he's really not that way, but he's you know people misunderstand him basically. Mm. Well, yeah. I, I don't know. That's thunder. Well, cranky's cranky. What's the misunderstanding? I mean, <laughs> yeah. You know, really. a, uh, well, really. And I want to take just a second to explain the two picture thing. This is something that Jackie teaches in right. her classes. Anytime yeah. if you're investigating, you take two pictures from the exact same location. Same spot. Same spot. Don't you move. Don't, don't move at all. You take two pictures. That way you have that before and after because like with Gary's yeah. photo, if it was just that second picture, people could say, well, that could have been anything. Could have been anything, right. right. But because we have the two pictures side by side, only seconds apart, it, mm -hmm. it gives it more credibility. Yeah. As something that flew yeah. by. So and I just pitch, wanted to point that out yeah. in case people didn't yeah. know. And it was I'm pitch dark in there. There's no light in there. Yeah. You see a little flash. That was all the flash. Yeah, there was no flash, light at all. So, yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. yeah. I remember when that happened. Yeah. I remember when that and happened. And that's why I went back. And that's what the short documentary is about. I went back up to the room again with uh, two psychics with yeah. me. And, uh, mm -hmm. okay. and I think we got that video. Yeah, let's take a look at that video. Yeah, uh, this is his time up there about these two, this incident that happened. We could show that video.
starting to rain a little bit here. It's a little bit past midnight. Most of the investigations are, are over as far as the group tour goes. Uh, one reason I came back to the Sierra Sky Ranch is because last time I was here, the loft up above the garage, uh, I felt I was attacked. Okay, I, uh, I went up there and I was praying in the spirit and uh, all of a sudden I felt this, uh, it wasn't like a force pushing me or anything, but I felt the pain in my upper lip like I'd been slugged in the mouth. Now, I've been hit before, so I know what that feels like. And uh, it got a little bit worse. And uh, I had my wife take a couple of pictures up there in the dark, and one didn't show anything. But the second picture showed a streaking or a ribbon orb right above my head. It was very noticeable. So I think I was attacked because I went up there and I was praying softly. And tonight, I got a couple of friends uh, going up there, uh, Jackie and uh, Tracy with me, and my cameraman, Johnny. And uh, we're going to see what develops, if anything develops at all, you know. Uh, supposedly, there's a, a person that used to live up there that is really cranky and uh, doesn't like guys, and he's attacked other gentlemen. So I'm going to pray about it and go up there and say, okay, uh, we still got a problem? Uh, let me know. And... Uh, We'll see what develops and hopefully we'll get something on camera. Thank you. Watch this hole. Praise God. Let's do this. Let it let it be calm, God. Let it be calm. Let your presence bring calmness as it does within us. Lord, you're the Almighty, you're the creator of everything, and we just ask for peace, Lord, peace. And I thank you for this opportunity to come back, I thank you for your strength in being able to do so, and I ask all these things in Jesus' name, amen. Ladies, if you have anything to share. Please feel free to do so. Okay. Um, as you were praying, when you began praying, um, the energy immediately went together and it went up here and it actually was spiraling like almost like a sli like a slither. Mm -hmm. and it was spiraling all on the edges of the room okay. like this while you were praying. Well, that very much fits the picture yeah. that was taken of me, the ribbon orb. Yeah, it was a streaking orb. My wife took two pictures the last time I was here because I told her I'd been struck. And I told her to take a picture. One showed nothing, and the second one shows the streaking ribbon type orb above my head. So, what you're describing sounds exactly like uh, sure you know, does. what transpired the first time. Tracy, you told me before we came up here that you were kind of nervous coming up here and you'd never come up here before no, and you've no, had no. encounters up here many times. So what changed your mind tonight? Uh, I just, there were lots of stories and I thought I'd come and check it out, see how it felt, maybe to conquer the fear a little bit. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Well, whatever reason, thanks for coming. <laughs> Also, um, when you finished the prayer, um, when the, the spirit dropped, I felt it drop, and the K2 was burning. Mm -hmm. and, and then I can just feel a really sharp pain on the right side of my neck. Mm -hmm. it, was, it didn't feel like it hit me, but it hurt. Okay. And then when your voice finished praying, when you finished praying, the pain dissipated. Cool. Well, that's when I was up here the first time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, I didn't feel a force but I felt the pain in my lip, and it, and it got somewhat greater, and then it went away, you know. Uh, so that's very similar, very cool. Okay, well, I don't know if he's uh, trying to just prove that, uh, you know, he can still do what he wants, you know. Uh, but once again, you know, in the name of Jesus, we bind you. You don't have the right, you don't have the authority. Don't even think about hurting people up here, okay? Because, uh, no, it's not allowed. Uh, next step is kicking your butt out of here, okay? And out of courtesy to others, we've been asked not to do that. 
So I'm not going to do that tonight, but I better not hear again about you, you know, doing bad things to people, or we may come back, okay? And get permission to kick your butt out of here. So just stop it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Okay, guys. Cool. Fun. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Was nice. Thank you. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, what do you think? I mean, um, do you think this was necessarily a demonic energy, or do you think it was just mm. negative and just this cranky, evil guy up there who just didn't like people? And Good question. Good question. You know, because uh, there's no conclusive evidence. Correct. Right. You know. Uh, once again, as I mentioned before, do I believe God can send people back? Yes. Are there per se ghosts that are, that are uh, stuck there or wish to be there for whatever reason? You know, it's a great unknown. Uh, I, having been involved, I would probably be leaning to, yes, that possibility exists, mm -hmm. okay? I mean, I don't know. Catholics call that purgatory, mm -hmm. you know? Correct. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. Uh, my thing in the future is, you know, I really don't want to go talk to somebody's grandmother. I'm yeah. really not interested. If I go into a house, whatever's there, I just want a clean house. Right. Okay? Right. Uh, and generally what I, I would do is, Lord, if there's something here that is, you know, from you, mm -hmm. well, then definitely, you know, uh, that's not why I'm here. But if it's not from you, well, then I, I just, you know, I send it to your feet right now for judgment, mm -hmm. you know, because, right. uh, right. you know, once again, I don't encourage people, I mean, if given the opportunity to... Uh, Clean your house and then just clean it all. Because if there is somebody there, odds are they probably should move on if that possibility right. exists, you know? Yes, yeah, you know? absolutely. Do the and, right and, thing. And Krista, you know, you know is, as a spirit, the spirit rescue work, or used to, I yeah, think you still, still do. do it. Mm -hmm. yeah. And right. that's actually, that's the same reason I stopped doing investigations for the most part. Because, you know, I started because I wanted to prove to myself that, mm -hmm. that it was real. True. Right. And then you, you get to the point where it was undeniable for myself it was sure. undeniable that ghosts exist mm -hmm. and then I came to that realization like well mm -hmm. for me it just it wasn't fun anymore just going and gathering evidence it's right. like I wanted to help them sure. I right. wanted to right. help them pass on right. so that's what I started doing but then a lot of these places mm -hmm. they you know they let you in and they're like okay but no rituals to help them move on it's like right. well yeah. That's yeah. just mean. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and you know? yeah, well, that's where the capitalization on the uh, right the money part comes in, where now they're charging. Uh, and it's it's expensive now. I mean, really? people are wise. People that own these buildings that are haunted, they're mm -hmm. charging 100 bucks now. Mm -hmm. it's not, that's nothing sure. just, uh, not unusual anymore, yeah. you know. But I think we diverge off the, I'll diverge off the topic here. Okay. I think the religion and the paranormal is our main focus tonight. And um, basically, everywhere you look, the supernatural is more culturally important, more acceptable than it's ever been before. Paranormal-themed media of all types have surged all over the world in books, both fiction and nonfiction, movies, TV, where the past few years have brought us everything from the scariest places on Earth to, the, to Psychic Tia to the <laughs> Monster Project. I mean, I could go on. And with interest in the paranormal at an all-time high and with Hollywood at the helm, with past shows like Medium and Ghost Whisperer, and, of course, all the reality shows, which we've talked about on the show before, Ghost Hunters, Ghost Adventures, Dead Files, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And let's not forget the Bigfoot hunts, the UFO spotting, iPhone apps, we simply can't get enough it's of everywhere. this stuff. It's everywhere. Yes, it's <laughs> everywhere. So it's not surprising that people ask, what is the relationship between religion, belief, religion and belief in the paranormal? But are they really asking, can I be a good member of a church or synagogue and still believe in the paranormal? I think so. And I agree Absolutely. with you. I, I think agree uh, with you. it can enhance. <clears throat> but I think most religions are so closed sure. to the idea that they don't give their, their members a chance to explore. Mm -hmm. Oh, I agree. And the Bible is a supernatural book, first and foremost. Oh, right. I yeah. mean, right. Know, so if you deny the supernatural, well, then, you know, I mean, uh, 
I think you're only getting 50% of the pie. Right. Exactly. Yeah, right. No, I agree with you wholeheartedly. And we actually have a list that Jackie put together of a bunch of different religions and their, um, I don't want to call it their official stance, but like their... It's just kind of an overview it's kind of where of they an, stand an overview. on ghosts. Yeah. Um, do you want to go over these at yeah, all? Yeah, let's, let's go over, let's touch on them. So, top of the list, Roman Catholic, they believe that ghosts are not spirits of the dead, but are malevolent spirits or demons. So, if you're Catholic, anything that goes bumps in the night is, is bad. Mm -hmm. And trying to contact them is strictly forbidden. Yeah. So, which I find interesting because... Working at Casa de Curandero yes. with the Curandero, who yes. works a lot with the Catholic population, sure. they definitely believe in ghosts. Well, and, tell we've you. Been, and we've right. been down in Mexico, and it's nothing to them. Uh, Uncle Tio, Uncle Juan, Tio Juan passed away ten years ago, but he's hanging out in the back bedroom. Right. It's okay. Right. But yeah. the Catholic Church says no. Nope. Yeah. Well, that's the official Catholic yeah. Church. There's a lot of Catholic priests that don't. Definitely believe in the paranormal, yeah. right? Just like on the Protestant side, but then there's a lot of Protestants that say, you know, if you speak in tongues and baptism in the Holy Spirit, well, then you're dealing with the demonic and you're going to hell. Right. Yeah, right. There's yeah. always two sides yeah. to every story. Yeah, yeah. Um, what else do we have here? Um, well, Je Jehovah Witness, yep. uh, uh, this, someone dies, their spirit is powerless, unable to interact with the living world. Demons are unclean spirits, deceive humans by posing as spirits of the dead to keep believers from worshiping Jehovah. I mean, and there may be a, a small of tr truth, I mean, a, a kernel of truth there, um, and then attempt to contact spirits is forbidden. And my mother-in-law is Jehovah Witness, and she is adamant, I'm going straight to hell. You know, I am. <laughs> So, so uh, she's, sorry, mom. <laughs> yeah, sorry, but uh, so, and that's then the truth. Lutheran. So I was raised right. as a Lutheran. I went through um, confirmation and just kind of like a catechism. Mm -hmm. But um, th th this is so Lutheran because you know we're so like Lutherans are pretty laid back. chill, laid back. Yeah. So this is this is the the Lutheran stance. And in the absence of a specific biblical evidence, the church does not speculate on whether ghosts exist or not. <laughs> mm. That's about as like safe as a religion can go without like choosing sides. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Politically correct. But very politically correct. Um, and they, they do believe in the biblical teachings against occultism and contacting mm. the dead. So while they're not really taking an official stance, they're saying that we don't recommend... Yeah, I wouldn't recommend them. it either. I mean, if you're just out <laughs> right. there for fun, and because you, you don't know what you're going to pick up out there, what kind of attachment, you know, mm -hmm. you got to be safe and cautious. Uh, and I think know. that goes without saying for anybody, whether you're doing yeah. it for a hobby or whether you're ghost hunting for as a career like me. But right. you know, it's always got to be cautious. I mean, Absolutely. always got to be cautious. Sure. No, nobody can say for sure what's out there. Right. What if there are demons? I personally don't believe in demons. They don't fit in with my belief structure. Sure. But what if I'm wrong and I go on a hunt, you know, and Satan himself comes out? I mean, because I, I can't say for 100% certainty that he doesn't exist or that demons don't exist. Mm -hmm. you know, and nobody yeah. can say that about their belief. That's what faith is about. I'm always reminded when somebody says that, and, I'm, and I, there's nothing wrong with that, I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm always reminded about a, a quote, and I don't know the origin of the quote, but it's, the greatest trick the devil ever pulled was convincing the world he didn't exist. Exactly. I love yeah. that quote. Yeah. I, I, I say it all, all right. the time. Right. He doesn't want you to know, that's for sure. But, yeah. you know, I, I, I might not be able to prove there's a God, but I think just by looking at this world, there's a mountain full of evidence there is a devil. Yeah. All you got to do is look at the poverty, the and hate, if, and everything and else. And if there's you know, one, so. there's the other. I mean, we're always in balance, yin and yang. So there's one, there's the other. Well, I, I do believe that, uh, and I wrote that in my book, that, uh, you know, where does evil come from? And, you know, in Genesis, God created everything. He says it's good. So if everything was good, where did evil come from? Right. Yeah. Well, then yeah. evil is nothing more than the perversion of, of good for its own selfish purpose. Yeah. So... Uh, yeah. And that's why he's coming back to correct it, so that uh, mm -hmm. the pendulum will swing back, and will definitely be under good, mm -hmm. and evil will no longer exist. You right. know? But demons, yeah, I've had uh, encounters with demons. I have no doubt. I've uh, spoke to a person on the phone and delivered them from a demon I didn't even know was going to happen. Yeah. Uh, I know many that's people. That's your that, calling. That's your true uh, calling. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. I'm just saying that uh, for that reason. The things I've been through that I truly believe sure. they right. exist. And if you ever do come in contact with one, 
you know, Jesus said, you know, people will be known by my name, so they shall cast out demons. Yeah. So just use his name, yeah. you know. And, uh, <laughs> it's interesting to hear the Tibetan Buddhists, Indian mm -hmm. Buddhists, Hindus, uh, all believe in ghosts. Mm -hmm. They have a, just a general across the board. Yeah, even, even Islam and Judaism, they also believe in ghosts. Yeah. So it's, um, in, in fact, going over the list of some of these major world religions, it's actually more of a rarity for them not to acknowledge yeah, ghosts sure. right. than it is for them to, to accept yeah. it. But the religions that happen to be prominent here in the United States right. all are on that minority where they're saying, no, we're not going to talk about that. It happened with Western culture a yeah. couple of centuries ago. You yeah. know, we just became more scientific and, uh, and want to rationalize the, everything. Most of the research I found that the more religious a person is, the more of a churchgoer they are, uh, the less likely they are to believe in uh, the paranormal, where if you are not a regular churchgoer, may still be a Christian, but mm -hmm. you know, are not a really spiritual person, um, they have a tendency to believe more about the paranormal. But it's shifting. Mm -hmm. It is shifting. It is. Research just well, say churches that for decades, you know, last yeah. couple of decades, have preached against it. Right. Mm -hmm. Whereas before, right. there wasn't so much against it, you know. But well, uh, and I think it's so funny too, because like you said, the Bible itself is so supernatural and so mm -hmm. paranormal. Yeah. So they believe that. These stories actually happen in the Bible, but then they don't think that it can happen to anybody else. They, yeah, believed, I mean, it, they believed it stopped there at, at, at the book of Acts. Uh, that is, that, was the is last, that what it yes. is? I guess I've never yeah. understood that. Like, how right. can somebody believe all these things that happen in the Bible and not believe right. in a ghost? So, well, mm -hmm. established religion, mainstream it. religion, um, they definitely, I mean, especially here in the United States, they definitely look frown on any of their their members, church members believing in ghosts, dealing with the paranormal. So is it possible for the two to coexist? I think so. Oh. You, think, you think so. I yeah. think so. When I do go out on investigations or house blessings, I say I pray. I, I, yeah. I say a prayer. Yeah. Um, I do other ritualistic things too, such as I use holy water when I cleanse a house. I use holy, even though I don't consider myself a Christian, I still believe in yeah. the power yeah. of the symbols of it. But it's the yeah. faith. It's it is. The faith. It's the faith. It's not necessarily that religion. That's true. It's the faith. It's all about the faith. It's all about the faith, you know? Yeah. Faith in what you believe in. That's right. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Exactly. And we're denying a third of the Trinity when we deny the supernatural because right. that's. The Holy, the Holy Spirit. Ghost. Yeah, the Holy I mean, Ghost. come on, guys. Well, Catholics you know? call it the Holy Ghost. <laughs> yeah, well, most Protestants, so you can go either way, Holy Spirit or Holy Ghost. It doesn't yeah. matter. Yeah, yeah. They mean so, the same person. So, yeah, I think it's our consensus anyway that, yes, uh, yeah. uh, religion and the paranormal, and your paranormal belief, I think it's your faith. I think it's what you believe in, how strongly you believe in. I think the two can go and coexist, as well as uh, Krista and Gary also believe the same. So um, if you're out there and you're kind of on the fence, about whether or not you uh, can go to church every Sunday and still believe in ghosts and paranormal, um, I think you're safe. You know, talk to your minister, talk to your, talk to friends. You know, call me. <laughs> you know, um, you know, call send us Gary, an email. Call Gary. You know, go on his blog. You know, talk to him, and maybe help you guide you a little bit to kind of come to a decision that uh, that maybe you're comfortable with. Yeah. So, anyway, but we do have um, we have our next segment here. Is I want to let everybody know that I received a video from, and this is what we were talking yeah. about, about having the faith. I received a video the other day asking that I take a look and give an opinion. It's about a man named David who passed away in like 2009. Since then, there have been small and numerous unexplained incidents, this video being the most recent. The story goes David bought this drum set for his son, which David also played. Recently, they were cleaning out the storage area, and a friend was playing the, the set, the drum set. So let's take a, a look at the uh, video clip. Yeah, this is going to be in a loop. In, it's going to slow down, so you're going to see it slow down. Well, yeah. Yeah, there it goes. Okay, there it goes. Yeah, there it well, that's what I thought. That's what I thought. Um, yeah, I definitely. I thought it was a, like a little piece of scrap of paper. Now, there's three people in the room. There's the son is playing, the, is using the camera. The mother, or the wife of David, is there. And then this is a friend. 
um, but almost looks like a scrap of paper. But I've but seen then, this similar before. And when it slows down, it looks translucent, though, which yes. makes me think it's not paper. Correct. Well, it's got to be close to the lens, and yeah. there's got to be probably a light on the camera. Right. Right? But, I mean, I've, see, I've got a couple, I mean... It's something that's new to me, but now that I look at it again, I've s actually seen something similar uh, to that. So what do you so, think it is, Jackie? I don't know. But in the end, does my opinion really matter? No. No? <laughs> <laughs> no not really. And I uh, think, and that's true for, for anything. Yeah. This, from what we talked about this earlier, and the family believes that it's... 100%. 100% that it's the, the father that Even the, the prior incidents, they believe it's 100% it's from mm -hmm. David, and they're comfortable mm -hmm. with that. Right. You know, so in the end, really, does it matter what I think? It really matters what they think. Right. Sure. This is their, I mean, they are, they are Christian. Sure. Um, you know, they, uh, they believe that David's been there to, I mean, probably off and on, just to kind mm -hmm. of check up on them and stuff, and they're comfortable with that, and know that he's loved and he loves them. So, I mean, and really. That all that matters. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's really as good as it gets. Yeah. Yeah. It is. I and, I, and I think that's true with any piece of paranormal evidence, whether or not other people believe what it is, it's how it affects you. Right. Because nobody else knows what you've been through and knows what you experience. That's right. So in the end, you know, yeah, it might be nice to get some validation from a professional, but if it affected you in a positive manner, then... Right. Who cares? So, yeah. <laughs> so, it really, actually, it really doesn't matter. Um, um, I know uh, David's family would be, uh, hopefully you will be pleased but that we've shown this. And I know we got your permission to go ahead and air it. But uh, basically what it comes down to, whatever you believe, and if this is comfortable for you, then that's all that matters. Yeah, absolutely. Not me, not anybody else. So. Absolutely. Um, that's it? Is that, is that, are we out of time? I know we, we, I got a, we, we, we got, got a couple minutes, minutes left. Uh, well, actually, right. uh, yeah. So, well, Gary, thank you for being with us. Um, sure. What's up next My for pleasure. you? Well, as I mentioned before, doing a project with you, a short film called What Do You Think? And, uh, <laughs> yeah. It actually involves pennies, finding pennies, too, and an angel. Yeah. So, you know, it's only going to be about uh, 12 minutes long. You'll never believe the, who uh, the angel is. <laughs> it's not well, me. I, you know, I mean, we yeah. talked. We were talking about the pennies from heaven earlier and stuff on mm -hmm. the quarters and yeah. whatever, the dimes. And there are quite a few instances. I mean, I was surprised that the number of people. I mean, just in pe talk, pe talking to people, yeah. not necessarily on the internet, but just talking to people. Oh no, I could yeah. bring in several mm -hmm. people for your yeah. show that uh, find pennies all the time. Yeah, all the time. There's got to be something there. There's got to be oh, something there. Oh, there is. There. I mean, uh, my wife. It's uh, like you know, she walk out of the bedroom and. She walked back to the bedroom, and then there's a penny right there in front of the uh, the doorway yeah. to the room. Or it will be someplace, and on the counter, there's nothing there, and you turn around, and there's a penny on the counter. Yeah. How do you explain that? You know, it's yeah. like... Well, uh, some may be yeah. coincidence. Some just may be... But not that often. No, no. And and that yeah. often. Specifically, Nothing's the way they show up and the timing, and, and as often as you said, I mean, uh, no, I, I honestly believe, uh, and I don't know what, but it's confirmation of a contact. Uh, from the unknown, and uh, I believe it's positive. But once again, you know, I mean, I don't base all my opinions necessarily on that all the time. Right. right. But I do right. take it into consideration. I was up at the lake the other day, and I was going to get on my laptop and write some more on a, a script I'm working on, and uh, which is funny. I, I'm in line. This lady puts a penny back on the counter, I guess, for like the next person. Yeah. It's a real shiny one, you know. Yeah. It's kind of like, okay, well, is that a sign telling me, yeah, get out there and start writing, you know. It's, yeah. uh, and that's kind of what this, this short film is, is going to do. It talks mm -hmm. about the, the finding the penny at a significant mm -hmm. moment. And so yeah. be on the lookout for it. When, is, when do you expect to? Next month. Next month, uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. be on the lookout. So. Okay. In the meantime, um, if you want to find more about the Jesus Tree Ornaments, you can go to www.thejesustreeornaments.com. And for a free printout of the ornaments, um, www.thejesustreedecorations.com. Mm -hmm. And you can also check out Gary's um, blog and see what he's working on. Keep up with all of his projects at garykennedy.com. Yeah, it's Gary's first name. It's got two R's in it. Yeah, yeah that's... Middle initials we'll, we'll are. put it on the screen. Yeah, it'll we'll be on the screen so people can yeah. see it. I um, haven't written on it in the last couple of years, so uh, well, it's kind of outdated, but I'm, I'm going to now... I'm going to start writing because there's been a lot of uh, other things that have happened since then. 
okay, uh, which okay. I discussed with you before. And yeah. if you ever want to have me back, I'll be glad to talk about the demonic more. Yeah. Okay. And yeah, some and, of the and that, connections. That's actually a, would be a really good episode. And I think mm -hmm. people, a lot of people would be interested in something yeah. like that. Yeah, so. and once again, uh, you out there in the audience, don't be afraid of them, you know. Uh, uh, the command given more often than any other in the Bible is mm -hmm. fear not. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. All right, guys, that about wraps it up. If you want to see what CCPI is doing, check them out at ccpifresno.org. If you want to see what I'm doing at casadeflodendero.com um, for new classes and events being offered. And we will see you back for our next show when we talk about more paranormal topics on the last Wednesday of each month, same channel, same time. Uh, we hope that you've enjoyed our show. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, please contact us at paranormaljourneys1 at gmail.com. And if you like what you've seen so far, go to our Facebook page, give us a like, and see what's coming up next. Um, we love having these conversations with you guys, whether it's through email or on Facebook. So let us know what you're thinking. Yeah. Um, tomorrow is uh, Thanksgiving, and um, uh, all of us here at Paranormal Journeys want to and feel truly grateful for all our fans and their support. So a big thank you to them. Uh, and from our house to yours, please have a wonderful and happy Thanksgiving. Take care. And be safe.